He said it, you know, past president. Nobody even talked about it. I will not and we will not build that F-bomb wall. I said, oh, the poor guy, he shouldn't have said that. It's terrible. Nobody picked it up. Nobody cared, right? I do it. It's, I'm telling you, it may be they will demand that the death penalty be brought back, okay, if I do it. So, but he was very nice, and, and he, does, he just doesn't understand that this is going to happen. And as you know, the Border Patrol agents, 16,500 last week, they endorsed Donald Trump. First time they've ever endorsed First time. And Sheriff Joe, we love Sheriff Joe. Sheriff Joe Arpaio, he knows a little bit about borders. He knows a little bit. You know what, I, I have to tell the story, because I deal with strong people, weak people, I deal with everybody. Smart people, dumb people, I deal with everybody. So I'm in Arizona, and we have this massive crowd, and the roads are blocked. And there were certain law enforcement, and I love law enforcement guys, but there were certain guys, they wanted to be very politically correct, they didn't want to do anything about it, and Sheriff Joe was there. And he comes up and he says, what's the problem? Now they chained themselves to their cars on a highway. And there was only one highway in. And we had 20,000 people. We had, it was massive. And it was all blocked up. And these people were, you know, calling names to other enforcement agencies and, you know, cursing at them and everything. And Joe heard about it and went, what? What? He didn't even understand. What? Come here. And Sheriff Joe, Joe Arpaio from that area. Hey, right. He goes up. We love Sheriff Joe. Wait. You gotta hear this. He goes over there. No guns, no nothing. He's standing there. They know who he is. What are you doing? Sheriff, we're changing the car. We're not gonna move. You got 30 seconds to unchange yourself. Now, in the meantime, there are about 400 people. Of the 400, there are only about three or four changing the car. The 400 people all ran. They dispersed. The four people, they had, and by the way, he had behind him a couple of guys with chain guns, right? The jaws, they call. Boom, 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 to jail. Cars were moved, they were thrown apart. They were, it, it took, it took, and, and I'm not saying this to build him up. He's a friend of mine, he's a great guy. And, and he and your former governor, Jan, and so many people, they're friends of mine, they're great people, they endorsed me early. Sheriff Joe Arpaio endorsed me early. But I got to watch what respect is. I got to watch it. Here we are, we have a road that's being held up for a long time. Thousands and thousands of people who want to come see a rally are being horribly treated. I mean, they're sitting in their car, their cars are turned off, you couldn't get through the highway, and other people didn't want to do anything. They're probably afraid to be sued, and I understand that. You know, today a policeman talks, if you talk the wrong way to somebody, you end up going to jail for the rest of your life, you know. But seriously, they take away your pension, they fire you from the force. Joe looked at him and says, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'll never forget. A couple of guys standing behind him, and they're always standing there with the cutters. And he said, what are you doing? Everybody left. With other people, they were standing there chanting, chanting, chanting. Cut him up. I think we took three or four people to jail. They were put in jail, and that was the end of it. They moved the cars, they pushed the cars out of the way. It took like five minutes. It was so beautiful to watch. It's called respect. It's called respect. And we had a rally of... 25,000 people at least, and there wasn't one protest, and I don't mind protests. I mean, when that young woman screamed, I couldn't hear her too much, but could only hear my people saying, there she is. <laughs> I want to get my people to shut up every once in a while, just leave her. But we had, you know, I always say a Trump rally is the safest place. First of all, do we have fun at Trump rallies? Do we have fun? Uh, do we have fun? You know? It's the safest place on earth. It's the safest place on earth. We have more safety. It's all, you know, we were in Costa Mesa in California, 31,000 people in this incredible dome, this amphitheater, and it was a love fest. But they had people outside burning the American flag and waving flags from other countries, okay? I'll be nice. They're waving flags. Bernie, that was the one where they started stomping on the police car. It was very funny. And the whole story, they probably had 150. The whole story was about that. They showed a couple of helicopter shots. And I had people whose children were killed, whose families were killed, whose relatives were killed by illegal immigrants. And we had them on the stage with me. It was an unbelievable evening, an unbelievable success. 
But 90% of the coverage was this guy stomping on a policeman's car. By the way, if that was Sheriff Joe, he wouldn't be stomping. I guarantee you. He wouldn't be stomping on Sheriff Joe's car, I can tell you that much right now. That'd be a long, long-term prison sentence for that guy. That guy did some major destruction. Then he almost broke his ass when he got off. Did you see him? He tried to pretend. He tried to pretend it didn't hurt. Oh, he was in pain. He took a heavy fall. He'll probably now sue the police because the car was too slippery on the hood, right? So... We're doing really well, and one of the things that I will tell you, so we got the, I think, I think we have a real chef. One of the things we're going to do, because Hillary is terrible, she's terrible as a candidate, and, and Bernie, somebody gets Bernie, I, I, and remember this, I think, and I'm pretty good with this stuff, you know, when I was a business person, I got along with everybody, all sides, I got along with everybody, it was my job. I got along with Democrats, Republicans, Hillary, Bill. I get along with everybody. I do what you, we do what we have to do, folks. And I'll tell you what, if you look at what's going on, and if you look at what we see, just take a look at what's going on around you. We don't make good deals anymore. We're like the dummies of the world. We have the worst trade deals ever done. NAFTA was signed by Bill Clinton, right? Designed by Bill Clinton. NAFTA has single-handedly destroyed much of the economic viability of our country. They've moved to Mexico. They've moved all over the place. It's, a, it's, it's one of the saddest things. When I won all these states, and I'm from New York, so I understood Syracuse and Rome, New York, the real Rome, and, and Albany and uh, outer Long Island. And I'd look at these factories that have been absolutely abandoned and left to die. And you could see 20, 25 years ago, they were vibrant places, but now they're just dead. You could buy them for $2. Actually, I'll give you a good clip. If I win, what I would do is before I win, Go buy all those empty factories all over the place, I'm telling you. You'll buy them for 37 cents. Because if I win, those factories will be vibrant again and you will have made a killing in the real estate market, okay? Good idea. And if I don't win, you will have wasted a couple of bucks. That's not so bad. I really mean it. I tell you what, I really mean it. I might have a conflict of interest, but I saw some. I said, man, I'd like to buy that thing. I'll bet I could buy that for nothing. Most of them are crumbling. You know, the bricks are all rotted out. They're crumbling, falling down. But they're all over Syracuse and, and all over Long Island and all over Pennsylvania. And then you have Hillary Clinton in West Virginia. And she says, we will put the coal miners out of work. We will put the coal miners out of business. We will end the, the mines. We will put the mines out of business, right? We will put the coal miners out of business. Coal miners, why Why would you want to put the coal miners out of business? It takes guts to be a coal miner. I personally, I love the coal miners. You saw how I did with West Virginia. I don't have the guts to be a coal miner. That's a tough job. I actually said to them, I said, fellas, because I got such support. I won with massive numbers in West Virginia. And I won in Kentucky, big area, people don't even realize. I won Kentucky, I won in Pennsylvania with massive numbers. Uh, they, I mean, these are incredible people. And I had a group of 20 of them in front of me. We had a crowd that was so big. I think we had 40,000 people. We had this incredible arena that was packed, and they had 20,000 people outside. We put the loudspeakers outside in West Virginia. The people are looking for help. They're looking for hope. They're looking for something. They're having nothing. They're having nothing. The EPA is destroying coal. And you know, coal is an incredible fuel. This is something that built, we built our country with coal. And you know who uses coal? China uses coal. We can't use it. I mean, they're making it impossible. And now they want to put everything else out of business. And yet a wind turbine that kills all the bald eagles, all, 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 okay, you know, I mean, that's okay with them, right? Even though it needs subsidy. But there's a place for everything. I know a lot about solar. I love solar, except there's a problem with it. Got a lot of problems with it. One problem is it's so expensive. They give me a 30-year 30, 30 payback. Oh, that's great. Let me buy something. I'll get my money back over a 30-year period. I mean, you got to make it so it works. Solar, uh, the concept of solar is good, but it has a problem. You know, when the sun isn't shining, you also need some, like, juice. You need a little electricity. I have a friend, he said, he's really into it. I said, I said so how are you doing? He said, you know, I built an all-solar house, but I have a problem. I have three months of the year where the sun isn't enough and I can't live and I have no electricity. I said, what do you do? I bought a big, ugly generator and I filled it up with gasoline and it spews fumes. But he needs help. 
Another friend of mine, I tell you this story. Isn't it great when you don't use teleprompters where you read the same speech every time? Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And this has to do, all this stuff has to do with leadership because our country's going wrong. So I have a friend. He went into an all lead. You know what lead is? All lead building. Some people call it all lead building. But they call it all lead. And it's highly rated. And he's a very substantial guy, very wealthy guy, has a tremendous, has a lot of office space. And he said, Donald, I'm so proud. And he wants to be, you know, he wants to give back to the country. That's why I'm doing this. I want to give back. That's why I'm doing this. Am I doing a good job? We just won the nomination. So, so he's a good guy, but he's a tough guy. Tough, smart, very rich. And he took many floors of an office building. And this building is rated like very high. In other words, environmentally unbelievable, right? And he said, Donald, I feel so good. I've just signed a lease with an old lead building. And he said, I feel so good about it. I say, which building? That one. I say, well, congratulations. I said, by the way, do you like, how's your vision? He goes, what's that have to do with it? I said, how is your vision? He said, my vision is good. I said, in three years it won't be because you won't have enough light to see. He said, what do you mean? Then I said, do you mind being freezing in the winter and hot as hell in the summer? Of course I do. I said, you will freeze your ass off in the winter. And in the summer, you will be a disaster. What do you mean? He said, Donald, look, I'm very proud of what I've done. Called me up the other day. He said, it's the dumbest thing he's ever done. He said, it was a warm day. He said, it's like 85 degrees in my office. I said, of course. They don't give you enough juice. They don't give, I, I can do that too. Just don't give enough electric. I'm going to be environmentally friendly, but everyone's going to sweat to death. And he said, you know, and you were right about another thing. I don't have enough light. So I took lights, and they're operated by batteries, and I put them on my desk so I can see. So, you know, you, because what he said, I just moved into an old lead building. I said, oh, that's too bad. He didn't know what I was talking about. So look, folks, we got to be smart. It's just like what's coming over the border. We have people coming over the border. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they come from. They come from Syria, they come from the migration, but they're coming all over the place. They're putting them in your community. And we've had some big problems. You know, you take a look at Paris, 130 people dead, hundreds of people still in the hospital. Their lives are, many of the lives are destroyed so badly. And by the way, speaking of that, speaking of that, if in Paris or if in San Bernardino with these young radicals, radical Islamic terrorism, Problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a president who's so incompetent he won't even mention the words. And there's nothing wrong with mentioning the words. We gotta solve it. If you're not gonna address the problem, if you're not gonna talk about the problem, then you're never gonna solve it. So radical Islamic terrorism, right? We have a problem. And we're gonna solve the problem. But they have to report, they have to report the bad ones. You see, there's like a very close bond, not working so well. But like the San Bernardino people, everyone knew they were up to bad stuff. They had bombs all over their floor. That's not exactly normal. If I go to your floor, these three beautiful young ladies in front, do you have any bombs on your floor? And you know what, if you did, I'd report you. I would say, I would call up the local sheriff who I just met. Where's the woman? She's fantastic. Where is she? The sheriff! So, Sheriff, I would call you, and I'd call the chief. Where's the chief? The chief was great. All those stars. And I'd call the chief. But I'd call up, and I'd say, Sheriff, I have a person here. I mean, I don't know much about him. But honestly, there's bombs all over their floor. Do you think that would be helpful, Sheriff? Right? But people don't report him, right? They see what's going on. And not going to happen, folks. they got to report because we can solve a lot of the problems. When they look for the thug, you know, the press used to call them mastermind. The mastermind. The mastermind. And then we wonder why our kids are so attracted to joining ISIS over the internet. They're using the internet better than we do. And you have to talk about that because why are we allowing them to get to our kids like this? Our kids are going over there. These kids don't even know what they're doing and they're going over to fight for ISIS. Because a lot of things, but the press is calling the leader the mastermind. I call him the guy with the dirty, filthy cap. All dirty, disgusting, right? All dirty. 
the mastermind. But they haven't been doing it so much lately. They haven't been doing it. But we have, to stop, we have to stop this stuff. We have to be smart. We have to be vigilant. And they have to report. And you know what they have to report? The guy, the mastermind that they called him, the guy with the cap, the guy that they've been looking for for months. You know where he was living? Right next door to his apartment. In the same location. Right next door to his apartment. And everybody in the community, religious people, they all knew he was there. And yet it took, what, nine months, almost a year to find him. And they found him only by mistake. He wasn't reported. So they all knew he was there. He was living in the community. He was the number one wanted person in the world. And he was living right next to where he lived. The same people. And they were protecting him. And he had just killed 130 people and hundreds of people in the hospital. So when that goes on, that's no good, folks. You gotta report. You gotta report. When you see trouble, you gotta report. And if you don't report, we can't handle it. If you don't report, we can't handle it. I'll just finish up a couple of things, because it's like current events. It's like a current event class. This, I like this better than my normal speech, right? Because you've already heard a lot of this stuff. But yesterday, our president uh, said Donald Trump has foreign countries rattled. Oh. Great. That's so great. And he said, rattled. Now look, here's the thing. We protect, we spend billions and billions and actually trillions and trillions, we owe 19 trillion, but we spend billions and hundreds of billions of dollars protecting other countries. And that's all fine. That's all fine. We protect Japan. Nobody knows that. We protect Germany. Nobody knows that. We protect Saudi Arabia. Do you know how much money Saudi Arabia makes? They wouldn't be there for two minutes if we ever said we'll leave. So they got pay. Anyways, uh, that's pretty horrible. Um, I guess when you really, really listen to the full speech that he gives, you can sort of see that he hasn't really said anything substantive at all about what he is going to actually do to solve any problems. He just rants about the problems that exist. And uh, the first hour of the speech was him just giving a play-by-play -play of uh, how he became the nominee. It's like a soap opera. Anyways, um, I don't like to talk politics too much, but I just want to clarify that uh, I'm not a supporter. Somebody in the comment sections seemed to think that because I was streaming this, I was a supporter. But the reason I was streaming it was so that everybody could see how vacant the whole thing is. You have to actually listen to an entire speech of his to understand that it's just a bunch of noise. This is Rex, and uh, Rex is also not a Donald Trump supporter. Right, Rex? All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you later. Hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you. Yeah, I did invent the selfie stick. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.